Hi, my name is Loz and I'm going to be speaking to you today about how to unload and load your spindle motor from your Z-head. To unload the spindle motor from the Z-head, you first need to lift the spindle cage to its highest position to give you access to the clamping bolt. To do this, use the jog buttons on your Smartbench console. First, use the supplied 6mm hex driver to loosen the clamp bolt in the clamping collar. Next, you need to unplug the power and signal cables from the top of your Z-head. Finally, we need to rotate the spindle motor slightly so that the switch is in line with the front of the Z-head. Then, you will be able to lift the spindle motor out the top of the Z-head. Now we've got our spindle motor out of our Z-head, we can now change the tool. To learn more about this, please navigate to our section on collets. We'll leave a link in the description of the video below. In that section, you can find information on essential collet maintenance, correct sizing of the collet, as well as correct tool positioning within the collet. Now we've loaded our tool into the collet, we can reinsert the spindle motor back into the Z-head. In this section, we're going to cover important information on the switch, cable connections, and orientation of the spindle motor for maximum airflow. Before we insert the spindle motor into the Z-head, we need to make sure the switch is in the on position. To do this, push the switch down towards the cutter. Next, we need to ensure that the cable connection into the back of the spindle is still good. You can do this by trying to turn the threaded collar on the cable. Just before we insert the spindle, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the airflow. The spindle motor has two ports, one on each side, which air come out of in a very specific direction. So it's worth getting the orientation in the Z-head right so this air can escape. It is important to note before we load the spindle motor that these surfaces on the collar of the spindle, as well as the clamping collar in the Z-head, are clean and free from any dust. Now we're going to load the spindle motor into the Z-head, taking care not to damage the tool tip or the flutes on any of the components. Before we tighten the clamping bolt, rotate the spindle anti-clockwise slightly so that the switch is in line with the aluminium pillar on the Z-head. This maximises the airflow and allows for spindle cooling. Now the spindle motor is in the correct orientation in the Z-head, we can take our 6mm hex driver and tighten the clamping bolt. To do this, check that the spindle can freely rotate in the clamp. Tighten the clamping bolt until the spindle can no longer rotate. Then apply no more than 1 8 of a turn. Do not exceed this tightening since it will crush the bearings in the spindle and reduce its life. If you have trouble achieving this torquing accuracy, you may want to check the cross bolt lubrication. To do this, Remove the cross bolt using the supplied T-driver. If the threads are dry, apply a thin film of lithium-based grease, the same grade applied to the Z-axis lead screws. Only apply grease to the end half of the bolt. This ensures that the spring washer remains dry, allowing it to lock when tight. Ensure that the spring washer is in place under the bolt head, and then reassemble. The final step before we start cutting again is to plug back in the power and signal cables into the Z-head. Your smart bench is now ready to cut again. I hope this was useful. If you require more information or a reminder, please visit our knowledge base. We'll put a link in the description below the video.